Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett, and today I am going to get into how to make a home security camera server. And this is going to be using either a current computer or a old computer, being Linux, Windows, or Mac. But um, what I'm going to really pertain this video to is Windows, because that's where I got most of my knowledge in. But the same will generally apply to, to the other systems. Now, because this video is going to be quite long, because I have to be very detailed, especially in the security part, then uh, please feel free to check out the timestamps below in the description. And that way you can just jump to whatever part that you need to. Now, as far as that goes for the cameras, I'm going to talk about mostly regular IP cameras you can pick up on eBay or some other place. And really, the cameras, it, it can be uh, $10, 20 even $50 cameras. And I'm not talking about the higher end, high expensive cameras, um, but I'm, I'm going to talk about both wireless and wired cameras, uh, both cameras that can move in audio and, and, and so on. Now, as far as that goes, um, I'm, I'm not going to get too deep into the simple setup cameras and uh, th this being like Netgear, Audio, and a few others. And I'm, I'm going to touch into that. There's actual security problems, which you might want to actually know about, which gets into how other people can get into your system without even really knowing about it. Not through breaking encryption, but because it's poor security to start with. Uh, so, so you might want to check that part out uh, when I start talking about that. But anyways, as far as that goes, let's uh, jump into the IP cameras. So, let's get into IP cameras. IP cameras is a very tricky subject in itself. What I'm going to start with is a simple setup system. So these are not really defined that well because it's still in its infancy. But basically, cameras like the Netgear Ario and many, many, many others. Um, I'm not going to name specifics, but basically, these are cameras that you can take out of box and, and get it set up within a few simple steps to almost, it just works out of the box itself. The problem with the majority of these cameras is they have security problems. Not in the encryption, and someone will say that they have high encryption, but the problem that I found is the actual camera, if you actually look at the MAC address, and you can associate to outside accounts without doing some verification on the camera itself. And, and on top of that, you, you, there's one person who, re, who actually bought an easy setup camera and set up with their online account, found out they didn't like it, and then they shipped it back, and, and basically the camera will email you if it detects motion. They'll sh they shipped it back to whoever they bought from. They sent it to someone else because it's a perfectly good camera. It's just they didn't like it. And then the someone else set it up and everything. And a week or two later from when the person the original person sent it back, they were getting emails saying the camera was detecting motion. Now, they were confused because, you know, obviously they didn't have a camera. So they looked into it and it turned out they were able to see th the camera in the other person's house, even though the person in another house had it set up on their own account. Um, so the camera was able to set up on multiple accounts. I, I think that's the Netgear Aria, by the way. Um, that is supposed to be fixed within a couple weeks. Uh, basically, the person actually emailed the engineers. The engineer said that, uh, I think it was an engineer, it might have been someone else, customer service probably. But basically, they said that the, they didn't expect people to ship it back so, or, or, or to for, from ship it back and go to someone else. So that was obviously saying, hey, this is an afterthought, whatever. So with that, the, the uh, solution is going to be everybody who has those cameras are going to have to deal with a hard reset. And, um, and, and because of that, uh, everybody is going to be inconvenienced with sending the camera back to their accounts. 
And even then, there could be potentially other problems. Now, um, there's other brands out there, I don't know them off the top of my head, that you can actually go to like Best Buy, Staples, or so on, take pictures of the MAC addresses that's on the box itself, and um, then wait for the cameras to be sold, so wait maybe a month or two, maybe a little bit more, and then you can just attach it to your account or whatever it may be, and you can actually see in other people's houses. Now, this is a major, major, major bad thing because obviously there's private privacy violations and a few other things that happens here. And it, even though the camera, it will say it is encrypted, it is encrypted from, from outside of attack. So from the camera to the servers of the company, it's encrypted or from the camera to say your computer because um, it connects directly to it. It might be encrypted but if your computer can or or your account can still access the camera it's not breaking the encryption it's just it's it's a front door type of thing so with that there's actual major security problems in many of these cameras that the simple setup a lot of these are probably going to end up being um fixed very um uh, I wouldn't say quickly, but over time, so over a couple of years period. So that's a big thing to note in itself. Now, regular IP cameras that I'm going to be talking about from now on, they're, they have their own flaws in itself. So one of the biggest flaws in, in regular IP cameras is it's easy to break into them. There's, there's just simply not too much. Like I can do a brute force attack and get into a regular camera with fairly ease now with that being said the uh many hackers <coughs> what they do is they try the default username and password and um and try to get into it, it, it basically when you pull the camera I, in fact i got a video on this particular subject where they'll go in scan a certain area or or there will already be a list of known um, vulnerable cameras and basically the person will go in and and um, put in the default information so it's you know admin admin or whatever it may be and then the person can get in and see and even control the camera listen and and screw up stuff majorly and even change the password so you can get into your own equipment but they could if, if it's hooked up back to the network so with that uh, you're, you're not out of the clear with these other cameras you do need to change the username and password and I'll suggest doing some due diligence on it uh, my my best advice on it is if you can afford a service like LastPass, then get it and use its password generator and, and store the password within LastPass. And that way you can figure out what is a password so you can go back to it. You don't have to write it down or whatever so you don't have to worry about losing it. But you can have a really difficult password uh, that a dictionary uh, brute force dictionary tap will not be able to be successful at <clears throat> because it just wouldn't have this stuff. So what you do is you you can use something like that and it will make it a bit more secure. So it, it takes it on your hands to to do that. And um, if it's a camera, if it's a camera for a store, I would advise against this. But if it's a camera for your home then you can write down the password on the camera itself like on the bottom of it or whatever in case you need it uh that that's, that's that's an option because if the person has physical access to the camera itself there's problems but if it's like in a store or something if it's hanging up there the person might be able to see it so you got problems with that in itself so if it's in your ho home then obviously you got problems in itself and and you don't, you know, you got bigger things to worry about. 
So um, let's get into the different types of cameras and let's get into abbreviations first. So there's PoE, power over ethernet. We'll get more into this in a wire. There is PTZ, pan, tilt, and zoom. And basically what this usually means universally is the cameras, they, um, they should be able to move on their own um, uh, through software obviously but they should be able to move on their own and then you have night vision and, and, and some other stuff so let's get into the and, and by the way the night vision the ptz P poe is is universal as far as if it says poe then it's power over ethernet and and it, it works where where you can power up the camera through the ethernet i'll get more into this in a second ptc in night vision it's iffy uh so what i found is some because there's no universal if if it says night vision if if it's um i forgot if it's active or passive but basically there's one type of night vision where it's always on and basically this actually washes out colors um it makes blacks actual like uh, jackets and whatever that are black um and, and even trees and stuff look like it's purple especially when it gets a little bit brighter um and and this just simply doesn't give you the true color of things but you might not care it, it might not be as much of a problem as you may think uh, but uh, but if you want something in true color, basically what will happen is you'll have a filter in in uh, when the light sensor detects on the camera when it detects the lighting conditions because below a certain point, the filter will click down and you'll actually hear a click. Um, and, and and what will happen is from there on it will use the night vision and then when the light brightens up a bit it'll flip up so that's pretty important in itself but uh, the PTZ what I found is some some manufacturers they say PTZ but it's not so you might want to do some research onto the camera itself I, I, I would expect it to move on its own but I found that's not a hundred percent in itself so keep that in mind I've, I've, I've seen I've literally seen outdoor fixed cameras, um, most outdoor cameras are fixed by the way, outdoor fixed cameras that, that says on the box PTZ and it's a fixed camera. So I've, I've seen it with my own eyes and, and had products come in that said that even though I knew it was supposed to be fixed and for obvious reasons, but that's a big thing to keep in mind. Um, but but if it says PTZ and and um, just look at the camera and compare it with others and, and you should get an idea if it moves and and check the return policy in case if it's not so so that's a big thing to keep in mind itself. So as far as that goes, let's get into wired. Wired is wired over I the Ethernet. You can power up the camera through the uh, outlet, or you can simply power it over Ethernet. So, if if you're doing a power over the Ethernet, the camera has to be PoE power, power Ethernet. Plus, on the other side, so the switch or router that you're using, it has to be power over Ethernet cap capable. Otherwise, it won't work. Uh, the the switch or router or whatever, it will be able to read the uh, information if, if the camera's plugged in through outlets, but it won't be able to power it up. So with that, um, you, you need to make sure the camera is powered with the Ethernet, plus the switch or router that you have is powered with the Ethernet. Um, it just takes a little bit of research to look at the model numbers and stuff like that um, for your switch and router. On the camera itself, it's just say on the box or, or online, and uh, that way you can get a good idea if it is. So power with the Ethernet, why is that important? Well, basically, if you're going to wire the system, 
what's going to end up happening is you need to um, you need to basically have it to the point where uh, where you can set up anywhere that you need and if it's uh, power with Ethernet you don't have to worry about outlets and um, and if the Ethernet goes out um, the Ethernet cable goes out then basically you're not going to get signal and you're also not going to get power but you're not going to get signal so you're going to get a, uh, a fault right there so that's a big thing to keep in mind is is with that um, now with that um, would I say get a camera that's wired I'll say yes because it's more secure because what happens with a wireless I can take a five to ten dollar or, or even a twenty dollar jammer or make one it's not that hard to make one like it would take like 16 cents literally 16 cents and some random parts and I can make one with with free good ease um but anyways uh basically i can make a jammer and uh, a, a low-end jammer and or, or buy a decent one and basically i could jam this signal for a wireless so yeah you got wireless cameras but you can't record anything because i'm jamming the signal so that's a uh, pretty important to note uh it, and and you can pretty much pick up a jammer fairly look it up online you can you can pick it up pretty easily uh, now as far as that might the thing to keep in mind is it is illegal to use a jammer um, uh, so, so you might want to check out the laws in your area for that but again you can pick one up fairly easily so the one thing to keep in mind with the um, with that is is more secure because the data is being transmitted through the cables and that cannot be jammed as easy it can be jammed with what's called electromagnetic interference but basically at that point there's not much you can do unless you have fiber optics um, and, and, and the realistic chance if you're going to have electromagnetic interference uh, that that will completely wipe out signals that will jam your, your entire stuff it's it's virtually non existing because I just look up how difficult it is for that to happen. Usually you have electromagnetic interference when the wires are neck and, and, and some other stuff. There's insulation, there's there's coating on the wires to prevent electromagnetic interference because it would naturally happen. But uh, basically um, if 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 someone have that ability you got bigger problems than, than you really think and it's probably a nuclear bomb that caused it so yeah um now as far as that goes so it's safer but the reverse of it is it's it's more of a permanent area because you will either have to run cables out through your house and this is a problem in itself because what happens is um if you're running a place or whatever you might not have the ability and uh, if, if it's an odd place you literally might not have the ability to run cables like you don't have the tools skills time whatever to do it so simply it might not be an option so with that one in mind um, it has downsides with that where where it's really for permanent uh, places and also you have to wire the house, obviously, or have the house already wired in the locations. So it, it takes a bit of planning. If you're going to go with doing one of the two things, I'll say run conduit out through your walls if you're building a house because wire solutions is a lot better. But again, it takes a lot of planning to figure out this one. And there's uh, one thing I forgot to mention is two, two things in fact uh, before I, I completely forget the uh, PTZ I have n even even the hundred two hundred dollar cameras I've never came across a camera that uh, on its own it will be able to 
track an item, an object. It, it will have a motion detector and whatever, but it will won't be able to track it for whatever reason. I, I never came across a camera that has done that so or had that ability. But the uh, second thing is uh, I already forgot about it, but I'll come back to it see if I remember. So as far as wireless, wireless has its advantages and one of the biggest advantages to the wireless is you can move it about and with it um, you don't have to worry about wiring the house itself if you're renting a property or whatever it may be. You don't, you don't really necessarily have that big of a problem with that. So you got freedom as long as the camera is powered up and connects to the, the Wi-Fi that you're system is with the there is a few other benefits with it um, that gets into mobility but one of the disadvantages with it is um, you you um, will have a limited amount of cameras you can put on a Wi-Fi system before it degrades the entire network uh, basically what happens is is um, a Wi-Fi network can only support up to so many devices. Even though you can fit like 250 something devices, 254 devices on the network, the problem is is uh, physics. Uh, I got into past videos on this, but basically physics. It says that um, by the time the uh, the the camera it, it comes back around to talk to the camera what happens because the Wi-Fi system can only talk to one device at a time by the time it gets back to the camera other things may time out because the camera's uh, too too slow too far away and whatever plus on top of that the entire network slows down to the slowest device on it on a Wi-Fi system not not a, a wireless or, or not a wired system so it's pretty important to note that's where a wired system you can get away with having more devices but uh, you can also get away with the it, it not slowing down the entire network uh, unless if you have like a couple hundred things which is probably not going to happen but with that the uh, w with a wireless system once you get up to about um, 10 cameras 20 cameras depending on your wireless system it, uh, it it simply cannot maintain its integrity so you can obviously buy higher-end systems by enterprise and one thing to keep in mind I'll get more into this in a router but basically a router a home router is a mixture of a few things on an enterprise put together for a very cheap price and that's really where that problem really comes in play but um there's ways around it um, i'm going to talk about it in a bit but basically it's just a note that if you're going to have m quite a few cameras on the system you will end up running into some problems um, sooner or later now with that being said is a lot of cameras that will have a record on motion and you can save it to an SD card and even transfer it to an FTP server uh, and you can make a computer into FTP server but the problem is is um, again you don't you don't you lose a lot of the ability to tracking and whatever but it doesn't degrade the entire network itself I'm not really gonna get into this because uh, again you're going to lose a lot of ability I, I want you to have the ability to track an item and that way the, the software itself can track a given person walking through your yard or whatever it may be if, if need be so uh, with that so it has a benefit of being able to move everywhere a disadvantage of that and also again a disadvantage of of the um, jammers so keep that in mind 
and if you're if you're going to be using this as a uh, bank system go for wired uh, stores wired home you can probably do more of the wireless unless if you live in a odd place but overall say wireless for for homes because uh, the chances of some robber having a chamber is is fairly low mostly because most robbers are too dumb to to really even you know think too much about the best way to go at it but um if if a robber is prepared then yeah they, they can really mess you over with a wireless system so keep that in mind but um yeah so as far as the um that goes let's go into the uh the the router side of things so as far as the routers they're interesting itself and it's going to take a lot of research on your end i'm just going to try to point you in the right direction but one thing to note is if you're going to look at your current or future router look at the make and models and look up the max device capability for the wireless if it doesn't list it which they're pretty good is a pretty good chance that it's not going to be listed go ahead and go on on the uh the, whoever makes a device email them and ask how many devices at max does this um, does this Wi-Fi router support what was it rated to if they say something like 250 whatever then they're blowing smoke up your tail uh, fact of the matter is is uh, you, you really ain't gonna get that uh, what you, you need to really find out is is the um, is it like a 10 device and then it's going to start is it's a rate for 10 devices is it rated for 20 devices or so on because what you're doing is you're streaming from 10 or 20 or less depending on your system and uh, at all at the same time while you're doing some other stuff so watching netflix playing games maybe watching the tv maybe stream between two computers whatever it may be and this is where problems really come in play. So if we go in here and we go and make two routers. So basically we have our two routers. So we've got router one, router two. And from here we go down to our modem and that goes out to the internet. Basically you connect the router two to router one. Connect the if 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 you can do it wired, that's best. Connect the computer. It could be a Raspberry Pi, it's fine. Connect the computer to the that that you're gonna have the surveillance stuff on on the router two. It connect the cameras on router two. Now, as far as the um, router one, what you're going to see is something like. Um, let's see if I can pull it up on here. Now, as far as this goes, I'm gonna be using my router as an example. This is obviously my primary, but say let's just say it's my secondary. So ignore this, but um, what we're going to do is say the primary is 192 IP, and this is the IP address, 168.1.1 at a, um, let's say a slash, uh, 24 so it's a class C uh, and that's a 255 255.0 um, subnetting the secondary Wi-Fi is 
point two point one slash twenty four, which is again the default that you're gonna get in most computers and stuff. Um, and and then from here, what happens is on your internet, um, let's say router one, router two. It's connected to whatever port on uh, wireless uh, wire connect to router one, and down out here it goes out to the internet somehow and through a modem or whatever. Basically, what happens here is you need to trick the router to to saying that this is is the internet, and um and what happens here is you're you're trying to give this a stack IP address so you're saying that um, the IP address should be whatever put in whatever within that last box just make sure it's not taken up by another device so what I would advise something like 250 or 254 or something like that some some high number and that way you don't run to a uh, you have a lesser chance of running a problem but um, you know, slash 24, so this is the slash 24 to 255 address, the uh, subnet address. And then this, since this Wi Fi router is that, let's change the color on this. Let's do green. So it's the Wi Fi router is this, is basically what you're looking at. Is um, a one nine two wants to say one one address, and what router two is going to think is that's the internet. That's that's um, the interface for the internet, and um, and it'll say it's whatever. In um, on the inside, the the uh, router two it will give everything within it that address so that's pretty important to note in itself um, and, and you can even continue this loop down a row by doing this trick um, if you got more Wi-Fi routers and whatever but I advise against it because you're going to get into you're going to jam your own stuff but uh, with that that is an actual possibility if you wanted to go down that route for whatever reason so that's a pretty important thing to note in itself where um, you need to basically have it where the router 2 thinks router 1 is the internet um, and router 1 will take care of its own thing it will say that this appliance is like 192 wants to say it's uh, 1.254 and um, and it will basically feed it like like any other device it, since it'll be wired and everything and um and it's on the same subnet and everything else so with that basically that's that's how i get around it and what happens is everything on the router one wi-fi it uh it doesn't get having ha have any derogation Sorry, it's hard word. Uh, degradation on it because all the cameras are on the secondary Wi-Fi, and uh, basically what this this basically means is um, if you want to use set the secondary Wi-Fi as your main for whatever reason, you will start having some major degradation on there. Um, so that's a pretty important thing to note. Um, you may be wondering all right what about the data going through the ethernet ports the uh port from two to one and then even one to the internet most of the time those are gigabit ports um so don't worry about that you're not going to hit that but uh, but basically it's pretty important to note this and you might be saying okay I, I just don't want my system to be on the internet at all this gets into something very important say I am a thief one of the things I'm still is computers and maybe security camera stuff because there is money in that and stuff like that 
um, and okay, you set up, you spent weeks, months, whatever, setting up this, doing all the research, whatever, and you got the system like you want. It took you a long time. Someone comes in, breaks in your house, steals the the uh, computer that you have the software on, or even a the if you bought went for the higher end stuff, the DVR boxes. Someone steals that, and now what? You're 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 screwed because the cops have no videos go on and and whatnot. So basically, what happens is is as things are recorded. You can have it saved to like Dropbox or Google Drive or something like that. And that way it's automatically uploaded to a cloud service. And you can tell the system, if, okay, if the if the recording is up to whatever age or so much of it is there, then start deleting the old stuff. Uh, that way you don't have to have, you know, years of files to sort through. But also at the same time, if someone's breaks into your house and like it takes on um, say an hour to get into or, or even like 10 minutes to get into where the the boxes the, the computer or whatever well what happens is you got 10 minutes of video right there um, and it's probably a few cameras that hit it so keep that in mind it's a big one there so now let's get into the operating systems and the computers. Um, I'm just going to touch on this lightly because all operating systems, even server operating systems, have some software that they can use. I'll be dealing with iSpy, and and that's mostly on Windows. I I, I forgot if if they have it for other operating systems, but I know it doesn't work that well with Windows server operating systems. So note that, but. You can you can use something like a Raspberry Pi because what happens is let's do uh, drawings again. Um, yeah, that's that's line enough. So basically, you can use a Raspberry Pi that uh, let's say that let's use a bright color like yellow or white. Say you got a Raspberry Pi, uh, you got the router. The Raspberry Pi is h hooked onto it. Um, it's obviously going off, doing its own thing from there. Um, what happens is is the Raspberry Pi just needs enough on it to run the software, and it's something called a KVM. And basically, what that is is a um, it's a, it's a wireless KVM. What you're looking for, multiplicity is what I use. You might find some other options out there, uh, even probably some free options. But a KVM allows you to use one mouse, one keyboard, uh, one monitor, or two monitors, and. Um, you're able to switch between multiple computers. It, that way you don't have a bunch of monitors, uh, a, a bunch of keyboards, a bunch of mice, and so on, because, um, you know, that's that's just inefficient. That's, so you don't have to switch over. A wireless KVM, however, is something a little bit extra. You can have that, but as long as you're connected to the same Wi-Fi router, Wi-Fi router to not the network uh, very important of that basically you should be able to control the other device as such so you don't have to have a physical connection there I like I like wireless KVMs a lot because it, it that way I don't have to run down to where the security camera server is I don't have to fiddle with it get it updated play for five minutes and run back up and whatever it uh, makes it a lot easier. I can just control it right here. So if I'm, I just want like someone knocks at the door, I can pull up real quick. Say, okay, a mail person's at the door. Um, I'll deal with it later. I'll drop off package there, or someone's at the door and it looks like it's important. 
then I can take a look and say, okay, I'll be there. And and and, and even if I have a, if um, I got a camera where the door is, and it works with the software as far as the audio in and out, I can even talk over the camera and say, hold on, I'll be there in a minute, and the person be can go through that. So uh, with that, basically, what you're really concerned with with the Raspberry Pi is can it i'm not going to write this can it um work with the security cameras in the security camera software specifically the security camera software next is can it send out to the internet so like going through dropbox or google drive and and, and maybe even allow you to remote in so does it have an Ethernet port and whatever? And chances are, if yes, then yeah, that answers yes. And lastly, um, can it do both with enough processing and, and whatever? You can you can throttle a lot of these softwares. So if if that last one is iffy, you can you can make it a yes most of the time. Uh, basically, uh, just just look at the minimum requires on the software whatever you choose to use and it should tell you what 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 you can and can't do as far as what is really needed but um basically you're looking at those three major things and and with that raspberry pi is for the most part should be able to do that and as long as the raspberry pi is plugged in the software's on it everything's set up correctly you can let it run and and uh, let's do its thing. And for those of you who don't know what a Raspberry Pi is, it's basically a computer the size of this uh, business card. So with that, it it's it, there's bigger ones, but for the most part, that that's really all you need. And um and most of them run, or or you can get them to run a rundown version of Windows, which should be fine. Should be fine I'm not, I'm not going to get into it because i never tried it myself but um if the big thing to keep in mind is you need to keep the operating system but specifically the computer on at all times because obviously it won't work if the computer's off it's like can i make calls sure on a phone but uh can you make calls if the phone's off no so even with that, you know, common sense should tell you the thing needs to be on. So if there are any questions about that, you might want to check your common sense and and, and do that. So uh, with that, let's go into the uh, next phase into this. Let's talk a little bit more about the IP cameras and specifically the settings on them. The biggest thing you got to keep in mind, and this is an actual what I'm down for now in my living room so what i have is on boot so what, what's going to happen with any ptz camera an actual one that moves on on is you plug it in it'll try to center itself it'll, it'll, it'll try to do its thing and you need to tell it um preset one is looking right here preset two is here 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 every so often you're going to have to uh, fix these because what's going to happen I, I don't know why I think it's just a decoration of the of the parts and whatever but every so often I mean you're paying like what even if it's like fifty hundred dollars it's you're, 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 unless you're paying in the thousands so every so often you'll say preset ones right here and then Later on, you'll notice it's pointing at here, and you gotta tell it to go back here and tell it that's preset one. I th there's it's unfortunate, but that's the truth. Now you can set the pre the PTZ speed. Uh, this takes a little bit of testing. Uh, when you're tracking items, it's it's pretty important that the camera doesn't because some of them go pretty fast. So, especially if it's a small space, you want it to to test that to see how fast it is. 
because it might be too fast for the system. Uh, another thing, you're not you're not talking about the most stable system unless if it's wired. If it's wireless, think about the timeouts. So you want it to catch it in time. Tell it to stop, basically. Because how the tracking is going to work on software is it'll say it will see the item moving right. And what would happen is is um, you can set the timer saying timeout after so often and then and go on. And and what will happen is it'll say like um let's see if I can make this bigger so I can see. So say for example if the um, item is this the tip of this pen. Um what would end up happening is it will move the camera where the center of it is here so it'll move it like that and then after a few seconds uh, depending on your settings if the item if it detects movement over here and only over here what it will do is it will try to move that to the center and um, that's how the tracking really works it doesn't it doesn't do a continuous tracking Basically, what happened is, is instead of having like two cameras in a garage, three cameras in a garage, what you can have is one camera in a garage pointing in the way for all the entrances, where all the entrances are barely able in the picture. But say like you got, um, I don't want to show mine, but say you got windows on one side, doors on the other, and garage doors and whatever, so what would happen is someone tries to go through the window the camera will move to the center of that and um and after a few seconds if nothing happens then it'll go back uh same thing with the door it'll move to the center of that and again and if, if something does happen and like say for example the person stealing something is walking around it'll move to the center to him after a few seconds so it gives it a few seconds for the system to catch up. You can obviously modify the timing and whatever, but that's where the PTZ speed comes in, is how fast do you want it to move. Um, that's pretty much about all I'm going to show with this. Um, you really should know about the rest of these things, um, and it's pretty self-explanatory. The biggest ones that you may want to take a look at is like mail servers and stuff like that. And that, that may give you extra benefits into it. But uh, keep in mind that cobwebs rain a lot, all the time. It, it's, it's nuts. Fog, oh boy, it, it triggers stuff like crazy. So cobwebs, rain, bugs, um, plants. Like literally, I had, if I find a video, I might actually show it. Um, I had, over the winter where I'm at, it, it, it gets cold like in the 20s and some plants can die outside and, and, and pot of plants can die outside. So you bring them inside and I used to bring them in the garage. I got vine um vine like plants and ferns and stuff and i on on some of my systems i got where it um does a time lapse so i can do a time lapse plus i got regular recordings going on and you can actually see the vines move around and dance around it looks, it looks nuts but i mean it happens over a period of time um it, it's like a I think I set up like take a picture every four minutes or something like that and you can see it actually move around and I've, I've seen it where some of the vines or ferns and whatever it moves quick enough where it triggers a camera and it'll, it'll start recording in real time right there so there's that um there's a lot of things that can trigger it, so keep that in mind. Uh, that, that that's where it gets into deleting stuff, um, old stuff. You can uh, on a lot of these cameras, you can record directly to the camera to SD card. So if you wanted to go that route, then fine. In fact, if you're if you're only going to use one or two cameras, that might be a better route to go to. 
you're not going to get a tracking ability, but it's it's a lot easier. Um, but with that, you have that ability. Uh, DDNS, basically all that means is instead of knowing the exact IP address because the IP of your house or business may, it most likely does change, you can actually go to a website and um, set up uh, DDNS and set it up on here or on one of your computers and basically type in that type in the port and you, you need to look at port forwarding by the way and 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 what happens there is you can actually say all right um i want to see this camera so you put in the address and the port and and it'll pull up everything so as far as that goes there's uh that now as far as uh software this highly varies so keep that in mind but you need to do research on which software you want i like iSpy and i recently done i've been using it for a long long time but recently started looking out for something else and what i found is it's still unfortunately it's very important to note that is the best there's not much competition out there the competition that is out there is not really trying that hard and um why is is this the best uh, well, unfortunately it's because again there's not much competition competition brings the most out companies um the the uh thing with iSpy is it does it's easy to set up for one. It, it's it has its own wizard. You can add cameras fairly easily, but basically it gives you a list on their site what has been tested, what works, and even if you're going to use a voice over the um, like like say for example, someone goes to your door and you had a camera outside, um, which camera works with the audio, and which doesn't. So you even have that ability in itself. Now, as far as that goes, the um, big, big thing to note is it has tracking, which is a huge thing. In fact, most most things out there, uh, uh, most software out there for Linux and Windows, I had checked on OS X. Of course, I don't have a Mac. Uh, most because of price, but um, most of them out there does not track Sim simply it does not track um in fact I'll, there, there's a ton of of things out there i'm not going to name any companies or any any given software besides i spy but there's a ton of things i saw out there that i would love to use but i can't because it doesn't have a tracking feature so yeah I, I, what am i going to do so the benefit of using something like this is you can set up with the camera fairly easily and um, once you go through the user and whatever you can even set up the if it has a ability to have a talk over thing you can do that um, name it and everything but let's go down to the motion detection and this is uh, where things get interesting so you can tell it uh, what type of, of um, detector to use and it'll give you some tips very important to note that the target range so how sensitive you want it color filtering and other things and then like say for example if um, part of the camera like say if it's a static camera and part of it goes out to the road um, it, it looks and see part of that road I can actually click and hold and and get a little box and I can drag that around and even make multiple boxes and that way I can make sure the road is not within the air everything that's in this great box or these great boxes uh, you can add as many as you want um, anything within them that will um, trigger uh, so so something goes in this area and it's moving around it wasn't there in, in previous frame or so then basically what I'll say is okay that uh, I think something was moved around there um, and then if it's a if it's a um, 
moving camera it doesn't work as well but if it's a static camera basically you can have it where it actually says okay I want to um, start recording if it's a moving camera like like for instance I had it in the living room where uh, I got one of the slides with a chain hanging down in the kitchen so from my living room you got kitchen and foyer and so on basically what happens is the chain it moves around because a fan once in a while and that triggers the camera to start recording and, and even uh, turn the camera itself to the chain and get stuck on it for whatever reason well in order to avoid it say for example if a dog goes in my room and tries to to take a crap or whatever I can catch them without worrying about it so the camera can actually move down and see which one done it, so I know which one at this point but um, or, or if someone tries to go in and steal something I can see and basically what would end up happening is I can have that uh, um, camera go, go to a given area um, after recording or after no motion and um, and then um, have that chain or whatever where it's not grayed in it's pretty important to note that so uh, with that so you can do that um, let's go to alerts so right here you can actually say uh, on movement or on no movement um, and then when movement is done do whatever and set intervals and all the other stuff and, and even tell it what to do from there so you can do that and let's go to the PZTZ so if you select your actual camera type you can get a list and you can tell it to track object any directions or whatever and go auto center and, and do this and this is where the it goes back to preset 1 or whatever presets and, and goes from there so it's pretty pretty important to note that um, and when you do that um, it, and right here you can if, if you have the camera up or if I have the camera up I can play around with it and move it around from here if, if I have it on the right one so and, and, and on the wizard it, you can actually set it up on the right one uh, fairly easily uh, just uh, with model and whatnot and it'll, it'll detect and it'll help you out with that as much as possible and go down here you can see scheduling and whatever but the biggest thing I want to mention is a lot of programs out there they don't have this ability where you can block out an area and say I just I don't care about anything outside this gray area I just want it to know that something moves around in this area so a lot of them you don't have that ability at all um, a lot of them a lot of them in fact, there's only probably about one or two I know off the top of my head, including this, uh, this, and maybe something else that has a tracking ability. Yeah, it's it's not. It has a PTZ ability, but n no tracking. So yeah, that tells you a lot, a lot, lot about that stuff. But anyways, as far as that goes, this is the biggest thing right here. So. Again, what you want to do is have it where it stores all the stuff to your Dropbox or whatever. So from there, if some, again, robber steals the computer itself, you don't have to worry about the, um, the, the, the stuff being lost. Now, as far as some extra stuff. So going again... Um, you need to have your device, whatever you have in it, record on, to have the ability to to um, stay on all the time. And one thing you got to keep in mind is what happens on the power outages, even if it's a short time. Well, on on many systems on the BIOS, you can have it where if power goes out and power comes back then automatically turn on the computer um, it, I'm not going to show you how to do that because the BIOS from one computer to, to one device to another can be quite different so check to see if, if you can do that um, by going into BIOS 
think keep in mind uh don't mess with things you don't you're not familiar with uh, with the bios because you can really mess up your computer but uh it doesn't hurt to peek at it um especially if you're not really going to mess with anything but it should say something like power or whatever power on boots uh what mine says and that way when if the power goes out and then it comes back on then it, it uh cranks up on its own now um another thing is you obviously need the software to automatically turn it on by itself because okay device updates it restarts on its own you, you shouldn't really have to worry about that you should set it up where the operating system restarts on its own so windows 10 is actually a pretty good thing for this believe it or not but it restarts on its own the um antivirus and all that stuff should update on its own the operating system should update on its own the computer should restart on its own when necessary the uh, cameras it itself uh, what I found if, if you're going with the cheaper end buy timers it doesn't have to be expensive but basically what I found is sometimes the cameras if, if it's wired it shouldn't really get stuck but wireless i found it sometimes gets stuck so you might want to buy some timers and just have it every day it turns off for you know a short amount of time as possible but basically resets the camera back to going back to wherever and um that way if it messes up it can reconnect to the internet or not to the Wi-Fi and to your system and, and work properly, ho hopefully. So that's a fairly big thing. And, and it's really more for the PTZ cameras. I, I hadn't really had much of a problem with the with the static cameras, but I, I still would advise the same thing for static. Um, with that, uh, that's pretty much about it as far as I can think of. If you want to add more information into there, then feel free to do so. Um, but feel free to leave a like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you in the next video. And hope you have a great day. And check out our Patreon to help videos like this come out in the future.